think for and there goes a sensor tube nice sensor tube is alive and uh, we're just waiting for rumble to kick in excellent 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 uh, let's make sure sensor tube is going Ch -ch -ch -ch. kitty cat salam via we have four people waiting for the stream to kick in on rumble <laughs> salam we are passed out right now again we have a comic book haul today as well okay we got a comic book haul today as well Plutonic Polaris, how are you doing? Do we have Chicho sign? 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 Virtual Nazgul salutations, hope you're doing well. Navarni. What do you mean do we have a Chicho sign? Oh, look at. Virtual Nazgul, redeem 500 points. Salutations, salutations, and gang, gang. Do not forget, do not forget. Free Assange, Free Assange, Free Assange. Julian Assange, publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capital's power to humanity. Something that we desperately, desperately need in our societies. Oh, for I forgot to do that. For more information, see wikileaks.org, candlesforassange.com, or our Julian Assange and Wikileaks playlist on sensor two and for the command uh, on twitch gang I changed the command uh, exclamation free Assange to say candles for Assange.com but I forgot to make it for the automatic uh, night bot command that keeps on coming for free Assange so I gotta remember to do that uh, my apologies about that good day plutonic pluralist goofy yx you saw the news uh, with uh, Navarni's wife. Uh, I saw the news with Navarni. Navarni's wife was at attendance at a EU thing, Um And we do have a Navarni command. If you do exclamation on Navarni, it'll take you to an article written by Scott Ritter. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Oh, God, we have Chicho sign. The likes God has never seen. <laughs> Assange free. That is how it has to be. Assange free. That is how it has to be. And gang, we are live on Rumble as well. Um, for some reason, I, I'm assuming we're live on Sensor Two. Uh, but the analytics hasn't kicked in on Sensor Two. But I'm assuming we're live on Sensor Two. Are we live on Sensor Two, gang? Oh, I see the chat. Cool. We are. We are going good evening from Rome. Salutations, Marco and Silver. Salutations, Kyle Chicho. How's it going, bro? Doing good, doing good, Kyle. Doing good. Blue Ox on sensor tube. Salutations, salutations. Doom coat. Likes a god never seen. Oh, the worms. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> that was confusing me all the time. There should have been a thing in our uh, movie folder on uh, what do you call it <laughs> on our for the guest this movie from the land to the sea free songs and let the world be indeed indeed slick mc navari's wife was immediately taken off twitter x after promising to continue his work i think it uh, it was they were referencing about navarmi oh okay that's why yeah i saw that i wasn't sure why but twitter is twitter now right it's, it's, some people say it's gone <laughs> like yeah it, it is what it is i'm gonna make a video now you're gonna make a video on this gang uh i'm chicho welcome to our live stream today is february 20th 2020 four and we're doing part three of our iran contra scandal trading card readings and we're going to read cards number um 25 to 36 today but we also have a comic book haul that we're going to do okay we're going to give one another five minutes or so to roll in uh and then we're going to do a comic book haul which is related to the stuff a little bit elder god would like this elder god would like this King Chill on Sensor Tube. Salutations, hey Chicho. Could you give me your thoughts on Wall Street and the big asset managers 
like BlackRock and uh, State Rock. Curious what you think about them. Uh, they're basically, it's sort of roll out of fascism in large part because, uh, because Batman, no, not Batman, but you'll like this. You know, it might be Batman related, you know, uh, sort of crime related, I'll give you a hint. Um, just uh, King King Chili on SensorTube was asking about uh, uh, what I think about BlackRock and Wall Street and all these funds and whatnot. Basically what happened after the 2008 financial collapse, right? Obama opened the floodgates and gave all these asset managers Wall Street because Citigroup really picked Obama's administration, right? So Citigroup was basically their bankrupt like but they picked who Obama's administration was going to be and as soon as Obama administration took, took over they gave a ton of money hundreds of billions of dollars to companies like BlackRock which were in the red right to manage Wall Street taxpayer money to you know pretend that everything hadn't collapsed and to build back the US economy. And what they did was took all that money and privatized everything, right? They started buying houses that were underwater, shouldn't have been worth, you know, maybe 50% of what they were on paper and stuff like this, right? Because the North American economy, especially the United States and Canada, the housing market really drives the Canadian US economy is really is housing is huge 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 and the housing market had completely collapsed so they gave all this money to BlackRock and companies like it and they started buying up all these houses that were underwater and all these construction companies were going under and stuff like this it was so ridiculous to a level where banks were actually destroying houses to take them off the market so the prices wouldn't collapse look into it I, I followed the stuff as it was happening it was crazy robo signing mortgages and um, just um, what do you call it the they were giving mortgages to people that like million dollar mortgages to people that didn't even have a job like it was crazy it was crazy and what's what what's the end result of of all this after 15 years of giving these people taxpayer money right taxpayer money right u.s debt at the end of the bush administration i believe it was around nine children a trillion i believe right now 15 years later 16 17 years later it's 33 trillion right and a lot of those trillions went to wall street to buy assets to compete against joe blow me and you in housing is one of the things and into the stock market and stuff like this so it's a scam right it's a government corp a government corporate partnership where they take taxpayer money and give it to the private corporations and the private corporations really control the government so they it's a loop they continue to filter money filter money filter money and uh, it's going to come to heads that's where we are that's where we are okay with anga life from uh, old australia cheers bloke cheers 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 and indeed free assange free assange john summerfold on sensor tube good afternoon how are you doing um state street haha uh, sorry thank you thank you state street or wall street a uh, lark bark free assange free assange indeed batman is the reason why there's inflation <laughs> virtual Nazgul says mr brain free salutations on twitch how are you doing um Jord 1908 hello everybody been a long time since I caught a stream glad to have you glad to have you gang let's do a little count and then we're gonna do a comic book haul and then we're gonna get into the readings um, I don't see the stats on the sensor tube I'm assuming we're live because people are watching uh, we got four people on rumble I think we got 22 people on Twitch. I have no idea how many people we got on SensorTube. We got like 10 people on SensorTube or something like that. Okay. Um, so, gang, let's do a comic book haul. Okay. Let's do a comic book haul, but it's not a comic book haul. It's a trading card haul. 
Okay, it's a trading card haul, but it's not these guys. It's not these guys. Okay, we're calling the comic book haul because it's Eclipse Comics trading cards, right? These are Eclipse Comics, right? And this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to read part three of this, cards number 25 to 36 today. But we got a box. And I tore off the address and stuff on here. And it really sucks that the person sent this in this because you can still smell <laughs> no bad man oh my God. smell like dish soap stuff on this right because it's finnish powerball this is not advertisement and i would never use this in my laundry and never have and uh no one in the family ever uses these things and i highly recommend that you do not use these things these are not very healthy for you from under what i understand uh wodanga life hey fella Queensland, oh, Queensland, Australia, old Australia, Queensland, Australia. Australia is, uh, let's see where it goes. Let's see where it goes, man. It was pretty draconian. Canada is maybe going in a better direction. Canada is still going draconian, right? Paul, I'll stick to your clothes. <laughs> yeah, this stuff, I don't know about this stuff, man. So, gang, let me tell you what's uh, what we bought this thing for. This thing total cost $170 Canadian. 170 Canadian okay it was $25 shipping and $24 taxes Canadian taxes right I bought it from a Canadian seller so I'm gonna get dinged with taxes I decided to go with a Canadian seller because it was selling a lot and I wouldn't get dinged with extra taxes at the border coming in from the United States it's still 14% tax 14% tax on a used item used item from 30 years ago if i decide to sell this again there'll be at least 14 percent tax so who knows how many times tax has been collected on this item that is the world we live in right now right so total for this 220 dollars canadian and that comes out to multiply by 75 150 probably around 160 dollars us okay let's crack this baby open let's crack this baby open and I don't have these. Oh, no, let me rephrase. I'll show you. Uh, I do have something of this. Man, I should have put it in a shoebox or something. Let's check it out. <laughs> Stinky, stinky. exactly cards right non sports trading cards Aldega, want to guess what cards you want to guess what cards they are who talked to us not a sponsor dangerous is Chicho. can you recommend the good way of washing clothes uh just the or like non chemically organic we buy like non stinky order free just regular like the simplest stuff you can imagine just put a little scoop in and wash it right? and I'm from a guy like I stop using like underarm deodorants and stuff people are gonna go I can see the memes coming or comments coming but I haven't used underarm deodorant like to take away natural bodily smell for 25 years at least right at least elder God knows where it's at serial killers trading cards exactly nice nice, nice. check this out <coughs> check this out check this out check this out uh never uh, uh 1907 first time that chicho we where do you get your information from i've seen some of your videos on youtube i want to know where you get uh, come to our discord server uh, come to our discord server and we link up a lot of information uh on there um i haven't put out a video regarding um you know my most recent news sources but there's a lot that we link there it's just not me it's other people linking as well okay uh so check this out 
actually it's not bad putting it in these things. a little check this out we lost a little thing majiggy for the box these things here i'm gonna put this guy here series two series one let's crack this one open too all right ah. Gilded. Oh yeah, did I say not and say Discord? Did I gilded server? Discord committed suicide and secure cell. Yeah. Random. Random moose brain. Salutations. Hope you're doing well. Let me take off the gilded server thing. Bring up the sensor to chat. Hope you're doing well. Can you talk a bit about what happened uh, with uh, Julia Timo? Is that uh, Navarni's wife? Is that Navarni's wife? Gang, take a look at this. Okay, let me show you this. Uh, so these guys, I'm going to change the view. I'm going to change the view. Okay, these are the true crime. Uh, let me change the view on here. Change the view. Check this out. These are the true crime trading cards that came out from Eclipse Comics. These weren't um, the serial killers, right? True crime serial killers. Okay. There's four sets total. Okay. These two are together. What's going on? Oh, these guys slum gangs there there's four sets that came out each set was 55 cards so each one of these is supposed to not each one of these each complete set is supposed to be hold on let me change this back each complete set is supposed to be 220 cards right so there's four times 220 cards here now i mentioned that at the time I did buy some of these cards when they came out because some of the comic book stores weren't carrying it because it was serial killers, it was taboo and stuff like this. So this is what the packs look like. I, I could only find three in my collection, right? These were the true crime uh, trading cards, right? That's where these guys came from, these guys, right? And I ended up having a box as well. Uh, I'm not sure how I got this box. Maybe the comic book store owner gave it to me or I bought a box of these things. I can't remember, right? And this is the back of the box, right? So true crime trading cards, uh, blah, 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 all that information, right? That's what these cards are. And it's got, let's see, Charles Manson and all that jazz, right? G Men and Gangster Series 2. So, this is Series 1 and Series 2. The box for Series 1 and Series 2. Looks like it. Series 2 G Men and Gangster. Okay. And so, on this side is Serial Killers and Mass Murderers. Text by Valerie Jones and Piggy Collar. And then this is Series 2 G Men and Gangsters. Text by Max Allen, Collins, and George Hangeloth, whatever. Art by Paul Lee. And the art on this one, Series 1, is John Bright. Right? So that's the box. And these are what the individual packs look like. Okay. I don't know if I have any more of these. I, you know, I would have to check. These are the only ones that I, you know, at the time when I did some 
organizing i found some but let's um the kicker here is there should be four sets complete and we're seeing take a look Doing. let me bring up the chat uh there's three of these ones i'm assuming it's just organized that way series two kiss no okay the, the the sticker here says kiss so it's not kiss okay and then there's one of these so i'll have to go through these and then there is two of these ones with al capone right so i'm assuming hold on let's bring out let's take a look at But they're not uh, so I would have to yeah check this out this is card number 111 and goes all the way to card 220 and they look to be in order which is great I'll have to check these 220 committee look at this beautiful artwork right uh pontus on pontus hagvar on sensor two you're asking me about navarni if you come to our twitch live stream in the command if you type in exclamation mark navarni an automatic message will come up and uh, it sends you to an article that Scott Ritter just put out this morning. I skimmed through it. I know a little bit about Navarni, but I'm not, uh, you know, I didn't look into him too much because from what I understand, he wasn't a huge significant as, you know, the Western world likes to say that he was Putin's major political rival, but he wasn't. He wasn't really well known uh, in Russia. Uh, he ran for mayor of Moscow, and I think he only got like 5% of the vote or something like this. Oh, this, that little thing that we had was broken from here. Okay, I'm going to have to organize these a little bit better. Put them in a, So that's that. This seems to be the same. This seems to be the same. So I got a feeling the guy didn't send me. Oh, no. So this has got to be... So that's 110 serial killers murderers who done it so i'm just assuming this is out of order so it's each one of these contains two sets so i'm assuming this guy is the same as these ones okay so let's check this out let's crack this one open and make sure okay It's card number one so what's al capone then so card number one here is slum gangs right Ooh, let's see card slum gangs the roots of organized crime beautiful artwork look at that like jeez look at this really nice artwork beautiful yeah real xenomorph that's the article i put in for um uh, what do you call it on uh, twitch that links it up to that article that i posted on our gilded server right so that's card number one so i'm assuming this one al capone is not card number one okay how do we open this there we go so this is card number seven okay cool this is card number one and i'm assuming card number seven is here is going to be al capone if we put it in order card number three four five there it is al capone okay cool so i'm assuming these aren't in order one two three four five come on five six 
nice and then this is going to be card number eight i hope it is card number eight right so this one al capone belongs at card number seven cool so that's what's going on okay these are really tight okay let's rearrange this as well why not and uh, I have no idea if we're ever gonna get a chance to read all of these but card number one nice nice so we have card number four there you go see that so card number seven Al Capone belongs there and since Al Capone is out let's see what it says for Al Capone right true. true crime Al Capone so set number one and two are cars number one to 110 or 109 109 I think it'd be 109 no 110 and then set three and four are cars number 111 to 220 right so Al Capone Alphonse Capone grew up in Brooklyn should we read this let's read this game let's do a little we'll pull this segment out okay so this is a comic book I'm gonna make sure I don't lose uh, organize these oh yeah these guys belong with this one these guys are over here we've got four sets of these and these are the true crime check this out see that Al Capone uh, wanted true crime trading cars, serial killers, G men, gangsters, and mass murderers, right? And I bought this box, and I, or I got this box, and bought some packs back in the day in early 1990s when they first came out, okay? But I never had a complete set, right? And the reason I bought these mainly is because some comic shops weren't carrying them because, you know, they thought it was inappropriate so for me uh, not liking censorship I decided to I must have them okay so these ones what I just did was just bought four complete sets of series one two three and four okay and these guys three of them have comp set one two and three in them and then set uh, sorry one one and two set one and two are in this and set three and four are in these guys okay and uh, this whole thing ended up costing 170 dollars uh, canadian plus 74 uh plus uh, 25 dollars in shipping plus 24 dollars in taxes so total came out to around 220 dollars canadian for three complete sets of the true crime trading cars put out by eclipse comics and i figured um, as long as we're doing this might as well read the al capone uh card right al capone card since it's also on the box right and it's card number seven in the series okay and these guys came out check it out came out in 1992 true, true crime series one g-men and gangsters text copyright 1992 paul allen collins and george hagel hagnor art copyright 1992 paul lee eclipse enterprises p.o box 1099 forestville california 95436 g-men equals gangsta uh, uh, no g-men equals uh g-men is the cops isn't it uh gangster man is a gangster man no i think g-man is like fbi right so you know there's 220 cards here we're picking one and you know at some point maybe we'll read the whole thing right so card number seven from series one of true crime from eclipse comics al capone alfonso capone grew up in brooklyn slums and was thrown out of school in the sixth grade for attacking his teacher what a badass while working as a bouncer at the harvard inn for 
uh, Frankie Yale, uh, then head of the Union uh, Sicilian Uni Uniani Sicilian, Capone cracked many a drunk skull and was himself cut across the cheek, thus acquiring, acquiring the nickname Scarface. By 1919, Capone was suspend, suspected of two murders and had, uh, and had became close friends with many future mobsters, including Lucky Luciano, uh, Ciro Terra, Terranova, and Johnny Torino. Capone was working for Torino in Chicago when Torino took over Big Jim uh, Colosimo's mob in 1920. Torino set Capone up at the Four Deuces uh, Saloon as a bodyguard, chauffeur, and brothel pitchman. Capone was Torino's right-hand man, learning the business while Torino created a multi-million dollar crime syndicate employing 1,000 men. In 1925, Torino was wounded in a gang shooting. He retired a multimillionaire, leaving Capone to inherit his remarkable criminal organization. Like any corporation, Torino's mob, Torino's mob was divided into departments. In this case, bootlegging, brothels, gambling, and contract murder. The key leaders of what would be known for the next 30 years are the Capone mob as the Capone mob were already in place when Capone took charge. Capone was an efficient crime boss, fiercely loyal to his key men. He often continued gang wars rather than turn a single hitman over to the enemy for retribution. He was the first mobster to court reporters, occasionally, uh, occasionally even holding press conferences. He would need all his skill to survive the next four years as the Torino O'Brien, Torio O'Banian feud gave rise to the bloodiest gang war in U.S. history. See card eight, Peter von Fratzus. Peter von Fratzus. We have Peter von Fratzus here. Peter von Fratzus. Look at that slim mustache. Right? G-men, there we go, Alaga. G-men is government men, government agents. Yeah, cool, thank you. So pretty cool. Huge history here, huge history here. And what I'll do, I'll check to make sure some of these boxes he's put them in, they're broken, unfortunate. See that? So I'll have to be careful with these. I might have to visit a comic book store and get some sleeves and stuff for these but we've got four sets uh we've got three sets gang and and what are we gonna do with these sets the stuff what are we gonna do with the stuff gang we we are going to take one of these sets there's set series one two three and four we'll break these up and auction off each of the sets in yearly comic book auctions so i get to have two sets complete sets and we'll auction off um series one series two series three and series four in different packs as auctions sound good sound good that's our comic book haul gang so again we're getting some goodies for me and we're getting some goodies for you guys for our twitch yearly auction so we got uh, drug war trading cars we're auctioning off. Uh, we got crime uh, trading cars. We got rotten to the core trading cars. And we got honey, garlic honey setup that we're going to do. We'll definitely have, um, what do you call it? Uh, comic books, right? And something else that I just got. Uh, what did I get? What did I get? I got, uh, oh yeah, uh, famous comic book creators trading cards right so we got some goodies uh to uh to do uh i'm glad we got this i've been keeping an eye on them and this was the best deal i could get for a bulk buy um for a whole set i wanted the whole set right i wanted the whole set because you know you're paying for shipping there's taxes and stuff like this but 
if I bought the set separately, I would have to buy, pay shipping four times and it was going to kick up the price for these. So $220 Canadian for three sets that comes out to like $73, $74 per complete set of these, which is pretty good, which is pretty good. Canadian, of course, Canadian, of course, right? Got to go to work. Oh, no, would I got life? Uh, cheers, cheers, uh, Marco. Uh, sensitive funny listening to you pronounce Italian names I'm brutal I'm brutal with American Canadian English names let alone Italian names right oh oh let's go salutation Pescons. interesting stuff interesting stuff indeed meme clear bam salutations on twitch that guy look like Walt Walt the uh, Oh, Walt um, from uh, what do you call it? Uh, making blue crack. Uh, panic, Chicho. I come for the proper information here, brother. What happened today uh, in the Julian Assange case? I saw some headlines uh, only. Uh, you know what? I, I had the live stream going uh, earlier this morning, but at, we don't have any word yet. They're in court. Supposedly, they were streaming. Uh, the sound the audio but they were using tech that's like 20 years old uh, intentionally right so people couldn't hear reporters couldn't hear what they were saying what was going on so they're doing shenanigans look man in the uk in canada in the western world in the united states we're living in fascist states end the fucking story anybody that even thinks that these are democracies that we live in that there's rule of law right now there's justice uh there isn't the 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 kangaroo court they've set up to persecute torture julian assange the way they've been doing proves proves it all right it tells us exactly what we need to know about who our governments are who these corporations are what the deep state is what the cia is what the fbi is what the police are what the court systems are what the judges are what this kangaroo court system and this so-called injustice system is that we live under it's up to us to get it back let's see how what we can do what will be the straw that broke the camel's back we'll see we'll see as far as i'm concerned i was done with them a long long ass time ago we'll see what the masses think the last straw is okay uh xeno talks yulia tomoshenko is a ukrainian politician who served as prime minister of ukraine in 2005 and again uh from 2007 until 2010 is that the lady with the hairs i'm really bad with names uh she was sentenced to seven years in prison in 2011 and released again in 2014 she ne uh, she negotiated during gas disputes with russia might be interesting yeah um she's the blonde hair girl she she had the hairs during the maidan coup stuff uh during the early 2000s 2004 she was vying for power in ukraine is that the one we're talking about uh xenon she met with putin as well uh a long time ago 10 years ago or so uh ukraine is going through tremendous changes right now there's different types of factions different types of people vying for power we'll see who will finally take control and who is going to be eliminated uh calling it as as we go is going to be very difficult yeah th thank you uh xenon Z xeno talks xeno talks talks thank you talks uh apologies i didn't recognize the name right away i'm crappy with names man um but yeah she's she's an oligarch she made she's a multi multi-millionaire uh again made her money through gas and corruption um we'll see how it goes we'll see how it goes and as far as i know she really doesn't have too much of a tie with the nazis there uh so i don't know i can say that i had a good viewing oh my god nicholas uh hey chicho hey chat salute nicholas how are you doing apologies i will have to chat up on replay 
enjoy the stream everyone and salutations nicholas thank you for popping in and we we never did the relationship stream on february 14th we've got to do it at some point uh elder god the protesters all over europe was absolutely amazing yeah yeah elder god linked it up on our discord uh server uh italy uh, france and stuff right sorry it's really uh yeah sorry it's really old name uh of my twitch account no worries it's a good name right uh marco marco is asking on sensor two what are my thoughts on nuclear energy uh, i put out a video a few years ago saying i didn't appreciate nuclear energy i didn't like it because the tech multiple reasons right because the disposal system of the waste is insane uh one of the ways they're disposing of the waste is by making du weapons which is absolutely insane um and a lot of reactors are garbage and you know we're producing waste that's uh you know going going to be around longer than the sun is going to be around longer than the earth is going to be around well, much longer than human beings are going to be around uh that being said i've changed my my nuclear energy um uh, is the way to go for us right now if we're going to build new reactors new ways of disposing of the waste uh reusing some of the waste as energy so i'm pro nuclear energy now right i wasn't pro i was pro nuclear in the 1990s i went i went not pro nuclear for a long time up to a few years ago in the last two years or so two three four years uh now i'm pro nuclear again um, that's my take and I I I change my opinion based on the information I come across right uh, Marco that's the question you were asking on uh, sensor two aside from that gang let's do part three of our Iran contra scandal trading card readings right we've done part one we've done part two and we're going to do part three okay and we're going to read cards number 30 uh 25 to 36 uh in this reading plutonic plurus is on rumble and elder gods on rumble too cool uh movies about this time still an open question whether fusion energy is uh or uh reasonable yeah back to the 80s back to the 80s Ch -ch. gang i'm going to change my view i'm going to turn off notifications i'm going to change my view um let me turn off the notifications i'm going to turn off chat as well so we won't get any chat okay and we'll do an outro we didn't do an intro but we'll do an outro okay uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. wow we're already 45 minutes in dang and i'll come back to the live stream to this view once we finish the reading and i'm going to set this up right the way we did before so we can do the intro and uh we've done the readings all the way to card number 24. i'm going to set it up the way we have before I want to do our little intro. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, lonely piggy on sensor on Twitch. How are you doing? Oh, I'm going to bring up the chat for sensor two too. Hi everyone. This is Chicho welcome to my channel and welcome to the live stream today is february 20th 2024 and we're doing part three of reading the iran contra scandal trading cards we've read in part one cards number 12 to 14 uh, 12 to uh, no, 12 uh, 1 to 12 and in part two we read cards number 13 to card number 24 and today we're going to read cards number 25 to number 36 and these cards are basically an amazing history of uh, what took place in the 1980s 
with the Iran-Contra scandal. Uh, there's a lot of history there, it connects up to a lot of politics, a lot of economics, a lot of deep state, a lot of CIA, a lot of FBI, a lot of war mongering, and a lot of insane people that have been given a lot of power to create a lot of chaos in our societies. Okay, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to continue our reading and um, learn more. Uh, about what took place and some of the characters, some of the players that were involved uh, um, during that period and before and after because uh, the people here that we read, some of them were still around, are still active uh, many, many years after the Iran-Contra affair ended and they were active and in power many years before the Iran Contra scandal took place. Okay. And what we're going to do is read card number 25. Okay. Card number 25. William Buckley. Okay. Card number 25 of the Iran Contra scandal trading cars from Eclipse Comics William Buckley William Buckley and these came out in as before 1988 okay card number 25 CIA station chief William Buckley William Buckley was the CIA chief of station in Beirut, Lebanon, when on March 16, 1984, he was kidnapped by Muslim Shia fundamentalists. His abduction sent shock waves through the intelligence community, for Buckley was the CIA's top terrorism expert. CIA Director William Casey's decision to send Buckley to Beirut in 1983 had been doubly dangerous. First, Buckley was an obsessive uh, wo womanizer whose flamboyant ways had led to breaches of security while he was stationed in Vietnam in the early 1970s. Second, his cover had been blown in Pakistan in 1979 when Muslim fundamentalists had ransacked the U.S. Embassy in Islamabad, gaining access to high-secret U.S. intelligence. Casey's decision violated a CIA rule not to send an agent who had been burnt into the same theater of operations for at least five years. In November 1984, ex-CIA agent Theodore Shackley, C-Car 24, who had known uh, Buckley in Vietnam, went to Hamburg, West Germany, to meet with uh, Manucher Gor Gorbenefar, C-Car 26, an exiled Iranian uh, wheeler dealer living in Paris who claimed he could arrange an arms for hostages ransom deal for the release of Buckley. In October of 1985, two months after the first U.S.-Israeli shipment of TOW missiles to Iran, the CIA received reliable information that Buckley had been taken to Iran and tortured to death the preceding, uh, the preceding June. It is still not known what secrets, if any, he revealed to his captors. William Buckley. William Buckley. Oh, look at the needle. That's card number twenty five. Card number twenty six. Who is this guy? Manucher 
Gorbanifar. Manutra Gorbanifar. Gorbanifar. Manutra Gorbanifar. Look at this guy. Ollie was here. Look at all the writing. Nietzsche. Nietzsche is dead. God. <laughs> Look at this one. The thing that says Nietzsche is dead. God. Oh, there's uh, Farsi writing as well. What does that say? I can't read Farsi, so I don't know what that says. For, uh, don't know. I'm a Contra, haha. <clears throat> o N plus F H. God is dead, Nietzsche. Haha, <laughs> that's what it is. Check that out. So, quote, God is dead, Nietzsche. And then it says, Nietzsche is dead, God. Haha. <laughs> Humor in the Iran Contra trading cards. Manutra Gorbanifar. Let's check this out. Card number 26. Arms Merchant. Manutra Gorbanifar. By November 1984, when expatriate Iranian arms dealer Manutra Gorbanifar offered ex CIA agent Theodore Shackley his help in freeing hostage. William Buckley, C car 24 and 25. He had already uh, failed three CIA lie detector tests. Four months earlier, the CIA had issued a quote, burn notice, end quote, of Gorba, warning that he should be regarded as an intelligence fabricator and a new one, a new nuisance. Nevertheless, Michael Leiden terrorism consultant to the NSC and Israeli agent David Kimchi C car 25 vouch for Gurban Afar to National Security Advisor Robert Mc, McFarland C car 28 Leiden called Gurban Afar one of the most honest educated honorable men I have ever known thus Gurban Afar became the middleman for the first five arms for hostages shipments of TOW and Tomahawk missiles to Iran. Later, McFarland was to refer to Gorbanifar as a borderline moron. <laughs> After the first three missile shipments brokered by Gorbanifar and Leiden produced only one hostage, CIA Director William Casey ordered another lie detector test. Gorbanifar failed again on every question but his name <laughs> and nationality. Afterwards, he appeared at Leiden's house claiming he had been physically injured during the test. Richard Secord became Leiden's replacement, but Gorbanifar was allowed to broker two more arms deals. Oliver North testified that Gorbanifar was suspected of being an Israeli agent. North also said that Gorbanifar had given him the idea to divert profits from Iranian arms deals to the contrast in a men's room. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the people who run our countries and spend hundreds of billions of dollars of our taxpayer money making deals in men's washrooms card number 26 Card number 27. Card number 27. Who's this guy? David Kimchi. 
David Kimchi. Card number 27. Senior Israeli intelligence official, David Kimchi. David Kimchi, a 30-year Mossad Israeli intelligence veteran, directed Israeli foreign ministry until 1986. In February 1982, Kimchi and National Security Advisor Robert McFarlane, C-Card 28, arrived at a secret plan, plan arrived at a secret plan for Israeli participation in U.S. covert actions in Central America. First, Israeli military advisors trained uh, Guatemalan and Honduran armed forces. Then, after Isra Israel captured tons of East Bloc weapons from the PLO during its June 1982 invasion of Lebanon, Israel offered to send these weapons to the Contras in return for favorable prices on U.S. fighter planes. The Reagan administration agreed to this proposal, and the Pentagon assigned Richard Secord, C-Card number 19, to oversee the weapons shipments. Shortly after being visited by the NC NSC's Michael Leiden in May 1985, Kimchi began to promote Manucher Gor Gorbenfar's credentials to American officials, see card number 26. By August, he had convinced McFarlane and Oliver North, see card number 13, that Gorbenfar's contacts could produce CIA agent William Buckley and other hostages, see card number 25, in return for generous shipments of weapons to Iran. The Iran Initiative, Arms for Hostages plan failed, but Israel continued to supply weapons to the Contras through 1986. One arms network was run by former Mossad agent named Mike Herrera, a close associate of Panama's drug dealing General Noriega, Manuel Noriega, while supplying East Bloc arms to the Contras. Herrera was also shipping Medellin cartel cocaine out of Panama. See card number 11. Mossad, working closely with the CIA to send weapons to Iran and weapons to South America. You can't make this shit up for real. For real. Number 27. Card number 28. Look at this good boy holding his Bible. Who is this? Who is this? Robert McFarlane. Robert McFarlane. Is that a dunce cap? birthday cake and a Bible or is that his birthday hat on Robert McFarland card number 28 National Security Advisor Robert Bud McFarland Marine Lieutenant Colonel Robert Bud McFarlane was one of the original planners of the Contra War against Nicaragua. In 1981, as an assistant to Secretary of State Alexander Haig, McFarlane authored, quote, taking the war to Nicaragua, end quote, and led the restricted interagency group RIG, which formulated and carried out an administra the administration's Central American policies. During his tenure as National Security Advisor from October 1983 through December 1985, McFarland oversaw Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North's activities, see card number 13. 
he repeatedly lied to Congress about North's actions and his own because he believed their actions were illegal uh, under the Boland Amendment. McFarland successfully solicited contra aid from foreign governments and also took part in the unsuccessful attempts to free hostage hostage CIA agent William Buckley. See card number 25, 26, and 27. When McFarland led a delegation to Iran in May 1986, carrying a cake and spare parts for Hawk anti-aircraft missiles, it was at the request of John Poindexter, his successor as National Security Advisor, see card number 35. McFarland was the natural choice, having been instrumental in persuading the President to authorize the original Israeli sh U.S. shipment of TOW missiles to Iran in August 1985. When three days of meetings failed to produce even one hostage, the delegation came home empty-handed, and a broken bud McFarland returned to private life. On February 9, 1987, Robert McFarland tried to kill himself with an overdose of Valium, saying he had failed his country. Robert McFarland, card number 28. Card number 29. Another hostage. Eugene Hazenoff. Hazenfoss. Eugene Hazenfoss. Hazenfoss. Eugene Hazenfoss. Eugene Hazenfoss. Card number 29, CIA cargo kicker, Eugene Hazen, Hazenfoss. On October 5th, 1986, a C-123 transport plane carrying arms to the Contras was shot down by Sandinista troops. The Reagan administration denied any government role in the flight, but subsequent evidence proved otherwise. Eugene Hazenfoss, the cargo kicker and lone survivor, was found to be a longtime CIA employee as were the two American pilots who died in the crash. All three had previously been employed by Air America, the CIA's airline in Southeast Asia. They were being paid by Robert Secord, C-card number 19. The airplane belonged to Southern Air Transport, a CIA proprietary. The airplanes, the plane's wreckage yielded detailed flight logs. Robert Owen's business card, C card number 14, and a yellow Air America operator's manual. The most damaging evidence came from Hazen Foss himself. He told a press conference that his supervisors in the operation, Max Gomez and Ramon Medina, were working for Vice President George Bush, C card 32. Ramon Medina was later identified as Luis Pasada Carriles, a shooter team alum, alumnus, C-Car 23, and an escapee from a Venezuelan jail where he'd been held in connection with the bombing of a Cuban civilian airline, which resulted in the death of 73 people. Max Gomez is the nom de gure of longtime CIA agent Felix Rodriguez, C card number 30. Eugene Hazenfoss was found guilty of invading Nicaragua, Nicaraguan airspace by a Sandinistas tribunal and then pardoned by Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega. After his release, he filed suit against the CIA for damages. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, the balls on this guy. Eugene has a boss. Card number 29. Card number 30. Felix Rodriguez. Felix Rodriguez. Who is this delightful person? Execute. Guavara executes. Phoenix. Oh, Bay of Pigs. Look at that. Bay of Pigs. Bay of Pigs. This guy was involved in the Bay of Pigs. CIA. I see CIA. Business. Cuba. Vietnam. Look at that. Torture. Oh, my. This guy's got a lot of names attached to him. Felix Rodriguez. Let's check out who this guy is. Of course, card number 30. Former CIA operative. Let's get this focused. Former CIA operative Felix Rodriguez. Felix Rodriguez, former CIA agent, alumnus of the CIA's shooter team, C car 23 is best known for his role in the killing of Che Guevara in 1967. From 1969 to 72, he flew hundreds of missions for the CIA in Vietnam as a helicopter gunship pilot and counterinsurgency expert. He was shot down at least five times. His superior officer was Donald Gregg, C card number 35, 31, who reported to Theodore Shackley, C car 24. In 1981, Rodriguez went to Honduras to help Argentina counterterrorism specialists specialist train Contra soldiers there. In 1983, he presented plans to Donald Gregg outlining the use of mobile strike units to attack rebel bases in El Salvador. Greg forwarded the plans to Robert McFarland, C card number 28. Oliver North, C card number, C card number 13, sent Rodriguez to Ilopango Military Air, Air Base in El Salvador, where in 1984 he was directing Contra resupply operations for Richard Secor's Enterprise, C card number 19 and 20. Flying helicopter missions for the El Salvadoran military and arranging safe passage for Medellin cartel cocaine en route from Panama to the US, C card 11. Rodriguez was the controller, control agent in charge of the ill-fated Hazanoff flight into Nicaragua, C card number 29. Between 1983 and 1986, Rodriguez had 17 me meetings with Greg three of which included Vice President George Bush, C card number 32. When Hazenfoss was shot down, the first, call, the first call Rodriguez made was to push Bush's office. A former girlfriend has reported that Rodriguez carries a concealed weapon and likes to shoot out streetlights for fun. Known as the Ayatollah of the Contras, he is said to still wear the wristwatch he took from the dead body of Che Guevara. Wow. Felix Rodriguez. Do we see Che's name in the background? Bay of Pigs, CIA. Is that C? Che. We got Cuba up top there. Now. Card number 30. Look at this guy. 
Donald Greg. Donald Greg. Donald Greg. Vice Presidential Security Advisor Donald Greg. In the wake of the Hazen Foss debacle, see card number 29. Donald Gregg, National Security Advisor to Vice President George Bush, C card number 32, tried to distance, distance himself from the activities of his old friend Felix Rodriguez, C card number 30. Gregg stated publicly that he didn't know of Rodriguez's involvement in the Contra Supply Network until August 8, 1986, although he did admit that he and Felix were still fast friends. Greg took credit for bringing Rodriguez and Oliver North, C card number 13, together, but insisted that they had not confided their activities to him, adhering instead to the need to know principle. Rodriguez, on the other hand, broadcast his ties to Bush and Greg to anyone who would listen. According to Richard Secord, card number 19, the relationship between Greg and Rodriguez became so notorious and led to such widespread public speculation about Vice President Bush's involvement with the Contra supply operations that John Singellob, C card number seven, wrote to North in September 1986, saying that Rodriguez's daily contact with Bush's office could damage President Reagan and the Republican Party, see card number 36. Clearly, Greg's dis disclaimers in regard to Rodriguez were intended to limit the injury to George Bush's reputation. When Oliver North was assigned to the National Security Council in 1981, Greg was the head of the NSC's Intelligence Directorate, which was responsible for all the covert action projects undertaken by the NSC. Donald Greg, Donald Greg. The guy's so nasty, the camera doesn't even want to focus on him again. Nasty people, nasty people. Card number 32. Skeletons in his closet. Known as the wimp. George Bush went to war to prove that he wasn't a wimp. George Bush Sr. What a piece of work this guy is. George Bush Sr. Card number 32. Vice President George Bush. Vice President George Bush, head of the drug in interdiction Tax Task Force and the Counterterrorism Task Force, Chairman of the Crisis Pre Planning Group of the Special Situation Group, with oversight authority for public and covert actions related to terrorism policy, former CIA director from 1976 to 1977, and patron of the Felix Rodriguez, and patron of Felix Rodriguez, C card number 30, claimed that on foreign policy decisions he was left out of the loop 
According to the Iran-Contra Committee's report, the vice president attended several meetings on the Iran initiative, but none of the participants could recall his views. However, John Poindexter, then President Reagan's national security advisor, see card number 35, had written a memo on February 1st, 1986, which stated in reference to the Iran initiative, the president and vice president are solid in taking the position that we have to try. As to Bush's knowledge of Rodriguez's role in the Contra aid network, there is a briefing memo from April from an April 30, 1986 meeting between between Bush and Rodriguez listing the subjects to be discussed the st status of the war in El Salvador and the resupply of the Contras. In 1988, Bush, the Republican presidential nominee, nominee chose as his running mate Indiana Senator Dan Quayle, see card number 14, when a memo from then FBI head J. Edgar Hoover was found stating that Mr. Mr. George Bush of the CIA had been briefed on November 23, 1963 about the reaction of the anti-Castro Cuban exiles in Miami to the assassination of President Kennedy, Bush's aides denied he was, he was this George Bush. But allegations continued to continue that Bush is concealing long-standing ties to the CIA and to Cuban exiles such as Rodriguez. Card number 32. This delightful monster. George Bush Sr. Many people collect George Bush Sr. to assassination on John F. Kennedy. Supposedly he was in Texas having drinks while Kennedy was assassinated. Card number 33. Edwin Meese, the third. Fed seven five nine zero two nine Z Edwin Mees the third. Who is Edwin Mees the third? Attorney General Card number thirty three Edmund. Mies the third attorney general after the has and foss crash see card number 29 u.s attorney general edmund Mies the third delayed fbi and customs investigations of southern air transport the cia company which had owned the down plane but the u.s missile sales to iran were exposed in lebanese journal on no November 4th, 1986, and a full-scale investigation became inevitable. Mies told the press on November 25th that while on a fact-finding mission for the president, he had discovered a memo in Oliver North's office indicating that profits from the sale of missiles to Iran had been diverted to the Contras. Mies stated that when he informed President Reagan of this of his discovery the president had claimed total ignorance during the ensuing investigation the question of whether or not reagan had known about the diversion was debated at length the more serious issue the ballist basic uh, illegality of the war against nicaragua was all but ignored mises inept handling of the investigation his failure to secure north's office 
or to take notes while questioning the principles allowed much uh, much evidence to be destroyed edwin means was investigated repeatedly concerning allegations of influence peddling and shady financial deals he finally resigned on july 5th 1988 claiming the investigation had vindicated him subsequent publications of the special prosecutor's report indicated however that Mies may well have committed criminal acts whether or not he obstructed justice during his term as chief law enforcement office officer of the u.s deserves further investigation edwin Mies. edwin Mies. the third Oh my gosh, sharing a fair bit of info about these people. These monsters don't disappear, eh? Card number 34. Who is this? Fawn Hall. Fawn Hall. Better shred than red. Ha ha. Arthuro Grice Jr. Fawn Hall. Lots of glare on the card. Fawn Hall. Better shred than red. secretary yeah card number 34 secretary fawn hall sometimes you have to go above the written law explained fawn hall devoted secretary of oliver north see card number 13 hall felt that when north ordered her to destroy or alter government documents he was heeding a call to obey a higher law Hall testified that on the evening of November 21st, 1986, she helped shred a pile of documents, a pile of documents a foot and a half high that included notes, telephone logs, and encoded messages. She stated that although shredding was done routinely on this particular night, so many material were shredded that the shredding machine jammed from the overload according to robert mcfarland see car card number 28 north had already shredded all key documents relating to the iran initiative and the contra supply operations by the afternoon of the 21st the story of the shredding party suggested an element of haste which made the survival of the iran contra division memo found by attorney uh, general edmund meese c card number three more reliable more than a simple typist hall was deeply in enmeshed in the national security community she dated arthur Cru arthur cruz jr the son of one of contra leaders and a contra himself hall's mother were robert was Robert McFarland's secretary. Fawn Hall went on from Oliver North office to work as a secretary for the Navy with no access to classified materials. She has expressed hopes of becoming an actress. Fawn Hall. Fawn Hall. I wonder if she ever became an actress.
There we go, Fawn. Your headshot. Card number thirty five. John Point Dexter findings findings nothing to see here gang john point dexter card number 35 national security advisor john point dexter vice admiral john m point dexter served as President Reagan's National Security Advisor from December 1985 through November 25, 1986. He was known throughout his Navy career as an officer with a photographic memory who kept his superiors well informed. Point Dexter testified that he had made a very deliberate decision not to ask the President about the division uh, diversion of Miss missile profits to the contrast in order to provide some future deniability for the president if it ever leaked out he further stated that reagan would have approved if he had been asked the following day after reagan announced that he would not have approved point dexter explained that that is the whole idea of deniability <laughs> <laughs> point dexter testified concerning oliver north activities c card number 13 that i never believed that the boland amendment ever applied to the nsc staff this odd interpretation of the boland amendment by which congress had meant to cut off all military aid to the contras was supported by Edwin Me Mees, the president's legal advisor, C card number 33. Point Dexter, uh, Point Dexter repeatedly lied to Congress about NS NSC's role in helping the Contras. Like North, Point Dexter destroyed piles of documents, including, including, he said, the only copy of the presidential finding retroactively authorizing missile sales to iran and characterizing these sales as a straight arms for hostages swap in 1988 john point dexter was in indicated indicted, indicted for defrauding the u.s government uh, and obstructing justice John Point Dexter. And finally, card number thirty six Ronald Reagan. Just say it don't. Just say it don't. Ronald Reagan, the puppets. Card number thirty six. United States President Ronald Dutch Reagan. On May 15, 1987, President Ronald Wilson Reagan admitted that private support of the Contras was all my idea to begin with. End quote. Reagan saw the Contras as freedom fighters and the moral equivalent of our founding fathers. He saw the Sandinistas as Soviet proxies who have turned Nicaragua into a totalitarian dungeon. 
focusing public and media attention on the real and imaginary shortcomings of the Nicaraguan Sandinistas served to distract attention from the brutal policies the Reagan administration had supported in Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. Since 1980, 200,000 Central Americans have been killed. 160,000 of these were not Nicaraguan. The wars the U.S. supported in Central America are being waged with assassination programs, bombing of villages, forced relocation of hundreds of thousands of peasants, and the defoliation of thousands of acres using napalm and other chemicals. The Reagan administration gambled that as long as the U.S. lives, uh, lives were not being lost in large numbers, the U.S. public would tolerate and support this style of low-intensity conflict. As for Iran, Reagan had uh, con condemned its leaders as the uh, strangest collection of looney tunes and squalid criminals since the Third Reich. Because Ronald Reagan's supporters largely agreed with his assessment, the revelations that Reagan administration had been selling weapons to Iran was a major low major blow to Reagan's personal credibility and thus marked the downfall of his popularity. Ronald Reagan. Who's the puppet master? Who's the puppet master? What? gang the Iran Contra trading cards 36 cards amazing history incredibly important period linking up people that are involved in Vietnam from the 1960s going all the way to the Reagan administration the Buddhist Bush administration and a lot of these players these actors were still involved in black ops in the u.s administration all the way to the 2000s incredible incredible amazing reading amazing reading i have been dying to read these cards i'm very happy that we got these done I'll have the readings for each of these cards, all 36, loaded up individually as well as having all three segments loaded up in their entirety. And the full live streams are available online as we're doing these live streams uh, within a few days in almost all of our video sharing platforms. I hope you enjoyed, gang. I'm going to go back to the live stream. Crazy, crazy. Turn on the chat, turn on the browser. Now the God, Ronald Reagan, 1911 to 2004, was an American president, a politician and actor who served as, the, served as the 40th president of the United States from 1981 to 1989. And then Bush, Bush Sr. took over after that, right? Incredible, incredible. Uh, Ryan MC on SensorTube is saying, saying the movie Argo is simply a fantastic depiction of what occurred. Argo, is that the one with Ben, ben Affleck? If that's the case, most historians would call it a piece of crap movie, Ryan, just to let you know, because it totally uh, deleted the Canadian embassy's part in freeing the hostages. Okay, what took place? how they uh, and their involvement in rescuing making sure a lot of the hostages uh, a lot of the americans were able to escape uh, iran without being taken hostage okay and uh, uh, a lot of other history 
and Ben Affleck can kiss my ass. <laughs> he sucks. Lark Bar, great card collection. Great card collection. Seriously. Peeling garlic while <laughs> listening. Nice job. Gang, let me give you a countdown. Uh, we got 16 people on uh, on sensor tube we got 24 people on twitch and we got seven people on rumble fantastic reading fantastic reading very glad we're knocking these off so this is the third set of eclipse comics um, political comic uh, political readings that we've done we've got the drug war we've got the JFK assassin assassination out of the way and now we've got the Iran Contra out of the way we'll see what else we read um, more more is my take sooner rather than later is my take Ramos on rumble salutations Chicho do you want to come to my eclipse party in southern Illinois the eclipse is going to be right over my far oh very nice but uh, thank you for the invite Ramas thank you for the invite email me if you want okay Ramas don't share your email in chat <laughs> there are too many people on the Ramas thank you very much for the invite but tell you the truth um, I I haven't left BC since 2002 I used to travel a lot a lot to the United States like a lot to the United States so you go to US two or three times at least a year uh, from late 1980s or mid 1980s all the way to early 2000s uh, but I haven't left BC since 2002 um, it's just I refuse to deal with border crossings and forfeit my rights and I have elderly family here that uh, uh, th I have an obligation to make sure that they are taken care of uh, so uh, thank you for the invite seriously my partner's been to an eclipse festival in uh, uh, before a couple of them and one of them was in Chile in the Galapagos Islands <laughs> no not Galapagos uh, Easter Island she went to an Easter Island eclipse festival there uh, and uh, one day I will attend an eclipse festival eclipse party uh, I went to other eclipse parties but not an eclipse festival I'll take some videos and send oh awesome thank you Ramas share it on our gilded server when you do would love to see I love these types of events love it love it love it I'm assuming there's gonna be lots of music Lark Park yeah Chicho I'm not a fan Ben, ben Affleck he's too dull and boring he's, he's he's pure Hollywood he's pure Hollywood and man the worst Batman in history oh elder god do you agree elder god says john point actor gets the pass from me does he i don't know brother i don't know none of these monsters do elder god <laughs> when i come to canada i will take chicho to the <laughs> chicho over the border <laughs> hilarious Aldegas says we're going to join John Point Dexter Point Dexter has endorsed the far-right conspiracy theory that the 2022 presidential election was rigged for favor of Joe Biden and claims that the United States quote has taken a hard left turn towards socialism and a Marxist form of tyrannical government end quote here's the kicker right he's not wrong right <laughs> well, the, as far as I'm concerned but the problem that does happen is because of the shit uh fucking shit show that point dexter and all those clowns created all over the world right i doubt it because they swung swung the pendulum so far so far towards just in complete annihilation of anything resembling democracy in many countries they conducted coups assassinations arming fanatics and stuff like this they did so much of this that the pendulum has swung so far to the left that they're rolling in exactly what they were trying to fight against which is communism fascism so it's because of pieces of shit like point dexter that there's so much chaos in the world right 
Yeah, and I agree with Ryan. It's it's about totalitarianism. That's the way I see it. Not about right and left, really. Lark Bark, Ben Affleck is the worst Batman in history. He makes George Clooney Batman look like a Mar Marlon Brando performance. That's a lot. Ben's policies, politics are quite erroneous, too. Yeah, 100%. Dancing visual salutations, salutations. Love the pot plant. I'm trying to remember the name of it. That 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 which pot plant? I forget. And there was uh who was the one that came here? Oh, ba -ba 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 -ba. someone showed up that said long time. Dancing visuals, mom is something mom. Where is the name? Where is the name? Hot Mom Salutations. If you're still on Twitch, I saw your message, but I wasn't going to interrupt the reading. <laughs> Dave seems to be preserving. Well, uh, we'll see uh, uh, Plutonic Perez say, Point Nessers knows what he's talking about. Still, the deep state, deeps, deep states, deep state seems to be preserving. Indeed, still creating chaos. Oh, this plant. <laughs> it's not a pot plant, though. Oh, but you like the pot plant. This. The plant pot. The plant pot. <laughs> Don't smoke this. Not good for you. Not good for you. That's a nickname you don't hear every day. <clears throat> truth of it. He knows the truth of it. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to be, you have to have your head shoved up someone's rear end not to re realize that the 2020 elections <laughs> were a shenanigans is crazy right gang let's call the stream let's call the stream thank you very much for being here just uh just to give you guys a little heads up no stream next weekend okay we're gonna take a one week break no stream next weekend lark bark i'm glad i made you laugh chicho with my last comment <laughs> for sure <laughs> man just imagine marlo brando doing batman like just imagine if you did something like streetcar named desire on batman like wow that would be a batman that would be an amazing batman right and as far as i'm concerned I don't think we've seen the best Batman performance yet. I think there's still someone to come to do a Batman that will live forever. Really. That's my take. Oh, look at Trump must endorse to free Assange for election votes. Yeah. Maybe he, he's not doing it because he knows the CIA will take him out. There'll be more push to assassinate him, right? Um, He's almost guaranteed to win if he doesn't get assassinated or if there's no shenanigans. And maybe the first day he gets in on his inauguration, he'll go free Assange, pardon Snowden. Right? If he does that, full on. Right? Talks. Nice catching your life. Have a good one. You as well. Fat man dancing vigil. I like Robert Patterson. I'm vengeance. Yeah. It was not bad. But I think the best is still yet to come. Marlon Brando definitely would have an offbeat performance as Batman. <laughs> Crazy. Gang, thank you very much for being here. I hope you enjoyed uh, the reading. Uh, if you want to follow this work, we're on Patreon, Substack, Subscribe Star. You can follow the work there. We have a gilded server. You're definitely welcome to join our silver server uh we're live streaming on twitch we're live streaming on sensor tube and we're live streaming on rumble and at some point bit and odyssey will kick in as well for some live streams we're uploading the audio on soundcloud.com forward slash chicho as a podcast and you can follow the work there if you like listening to podcasts we're on twitter we're on lines we're on mk we're on gab we're on true social we're on substack notes we're on getter you can definitely follow the work there elder god says christian bale was okay as bruce not gray as bad yeah agreed 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 i didn't like christian bale's batman actually i think it was 
he, he tried too hard he tried too hard it wasn't natural right I think Bruce should be over the top flamboyant playboy and Batman should be natural state for Batman thanks for the stream teacher and free Assange and indeed indeed gang do not forget do not forget free Assange free Assange free Assange Julian Assange publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity something that we desperately desperately need in our societies for more information see wikileaks.org candlesforassange.com or countless resources available on free speech platforms especially this week especially this week where were the drugs going swear to me swear to me gang i hope you guys have a fantastic week don't forget i'll, I'll be on gilded chit chatting it up and stuff like this sharing information but no stream next weekend if something major happens with assange this week we'll see i might do a quick stream on thursday possibly but we'll see but we'll catch up again uh the following weekend uh and we'll see where we're at fingers crossed aside from that gang i hope you have a fantastic rest of your week and next week next weekend bye everyone